starting off with Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Issue number one from DC Comics in September of 2010, a book that I don't think a lot of people know it's out there. Um, yeah, it's weird. Like some of those like Scooby Apocalypse books, like towards the end of the run are worth like good, like especially the variants are worth good money. Um, and this is like, I don't know, Scooby-Doo, where are you? That's like, like a hundred and some issues in, right? They're still making it, right? I believe so. Yeah. Let me look. Or did they stop? They are. Uh, they are. Yeah, it's I, been I, dropping. It's been dropping every week, but just no variants. Just... Is that, is that what they normally do? No variants? It's just like one, just like a cover A. Yeah, I don't think there's, I don't think there is, a, or, or I don't think there are any variants for Scooby Doo. Yeah, they're up to 126 one, right? right now. It looks like. So. Um, this one must be pretty hard to find, though. Um, this this sold for eighty dollars this week. Raw. 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 Wow. Wow. That's surprising. 2010, that's it's back there. So I had never seen this book. Good luck. I wonder how many I, I'm trying to look, I'm trying to I'm looking at Scooby's like his feet. Uh, and yeah. Something like <laughs> it he has broke his front wrist some or whatever the dog's things are called. I don't know how he's I don't even know how you get your arms like like his legs like that. Like, and then something like looks like his head. red rockets out too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you ever seen a dog like dash in the yard? Not like that though. It's Let's I mean over exaggerated. As like Scooby Doo would be, anyways, right? And what the heck is Fred doing? <laughs> Fred's riding riding the <laughs> He's dragon. riding the dragon. Yeah. <laughs> With Daphne, right? <laughs> yeah. Of course. I mean, isn't that expected? <laughs> yeah. I would say so. That's nuts. Yeah, there is a Jim Lee cover variant for the Scooby-Doo run, Heroes Reborn Comics says. And uh, that's, a, that's a cool book, too. All right. It's a donkey talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> m m moving on, next we have got... Pretty cool Star Wars book. Sergio Aragonis stomps S Star Wars. So, Dark Horse book from February 16th, 2000, 2000. Is this the right book, Stein? That is the right book. Yeah, I've that never seen right this. Book. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, like, you know how, like, he's, he's done like this against, like, Marvel and DC and all that stuff. He... You know, he just makes spoofs of a lot of different things. Um, so he did Star Wars back in the Dark Horse, the Star Wars Dark Horse days. And um, it's a one shot. Uh, this one, yeah, this one sold for a lot this week. This this was like a, I don't know, like a $15, $20 book, but it sold for 70 this week. Wow. So definitely nice. one that if you see it uh, for cheap, uh, it, that would be a good thing to. Uh, to pick up yeah yeah sorry sorry about the 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 dog thing <laughs> you don't mess with people's dogs Stein. <laughs> oh, no. yeah that's interesting i saw a thing of him on uh instagram i was scrolling somebody had a, a video of him drawing something live not live but it was an old video um of course the creator of Gru. I feel like everybody had like an uncle that red grew, like the young uncle that red grew. I, I, grew was a weird book that sells like crazy that none of us buy, but it right. still sells. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Next, we have got Haunt the Ash Can from New York Comic Con in 2011. A lot of people don't know about this book. This is a hard book to find any information about. I didn't know there was a haunt ash can, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, um, they gave it out from their table at the con. This looks dope, though. Yeah. I like it this. Does, it does. Who did the cover on this, though? Um, I'm trying to look at the little signature down in the bottom right, and I can't tell who that is. Yeah. 
I don't know. That's a great question. It obviously McFarlane and Capullo weren't weren't they doing the book at the time? I could I be mean, wrong. They did the re- yeah, they did the regular book, but this doesn't look like either one of theirs. Yeah. Um but uh this sold for two hundred and fifty dollars this week. Oh wow. wow. Oh, Thoreau got it. Dang That's a cool it. book. I saw I sold all my ash cans way too early. <laughs> this is a tough one. A super tough one. You can't find any information. I couldn't find a regular picture of it on the internet. So I had to go and cut hmm. one from a from a weird eBay page. <laughs> but yeah. Hey, do what do what you gotta do, man. Get it up there, baby. <laughs> How much did it sell for again? Two fifty? Two fifty. Yeah. So T- rare, no one knows what it looks like. Yeah. Haunts uh, always had good variants to them, good covers to them. I never read it. So. Oh, Thoreau Thoreau said he got, got it. it. Yeah. NYCC must have been there that year. Do you guys think that that's a bad thing? Like when there's, like some things that are so rare that you, people don't know anything about it. Is that a bad thing or is that a good thing? It's an obscure thing. <laughs> I think it's a good thing. I, I think those, I'll be honest, I think those are uh, the reason that a lot of people love the content that is made about comic books is finding new books that they've never heard for of. Is that what you're asking or am I reading you wrong? Yeah, yeah, like, I mean, I mean, so like, I mean, kind of like with that Mr. T book, you know, the last few weeks or whatever, like mm-hmm. nobody had ever even heard of that book. You know, one sold for forty bucks, and then all of a sudden, people like, "Oh, that's pretty cool, Steranko," and and then it, the you know just went crazy. But before that, nobody even heard of it. You probably, if somebody saw that in a store, they probably would have just passed it by and not even thought about it. I just wonder if, like, things that are like super rare. Um, I mean, I know Long Short brings you know a lot. Of, he you know he puts a lot of stuff on there. Um, you know, James Kreider puts books on there that I've never seen before. I just think it's a, I like it. I mean, I, I, I like having things that nobody else has. Um, but I can see how like having something that, you know, is so rare that it's not worth anything is can also be a problem. Like I don't, I've got books that probably nobody's ever even heard of, but I don't, I'm not getting rid of them for, because I'm not going to just give it away for $15 when, Right. I'll never be able to replace it again. I agree. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I, that's that's why I fell in love with CBSI back when it first started in the G plus days. It's because people were putting up. Uh, it started uh, my foray back into uh, speculation, the world of speculation and comics, was being on the CGC boards and looking at the flea market garage sale finds page or or. Uh, thread which is um, one of the best threads over there and seeing you know people like um uh what's his name put up crazy books uh you know jimmy linguini put up crazy books uh uh sleepy john yanni gogolak put up crazy books and then people kind of migrated over to uh the g plus pages and there you were seeing these crazy books that people are going oh look at this crazy find and people are going why are why is that a a uh, tough book. Oh, it's rare. It's this rare. Da, 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 da. And that kind of grew into my my jumping into speculation. And I think that was for a lot of people. So go check out that uh, original thread on CGC, the CGC forum. Uh, it's called Flea Market and Garage Sale Finds, I think. It's been going forever. So, all right, next. This one's interesting too. Street Trash, issue number one from Viper Publications in 2016. Now, this he is a reprint, or he's at least reprinted this book a couple times because there is a copy from 2022 out there that doesn't have the little blue corner box and it's a little bit different. But a comic book based off one of the craziest gore movies of all time, Street Trash. This cover is 
is out of control, right? <laughs> yeah. I, it looks like any other trash album I've ever seen. Do you guys know about Street Trash the movie? Mm-mm. Never heard of it. This is Street Trash the movie. My wife, my Busting baby. your hump and getting nowhere. This just ain't my day. The boss. Is he always on your back? Liza, my ass belongs in your chair, not in your lap, which is where you keep trying to put it. You bastard. The wife. You know. And the kids. Is that right? They never listen. I hate to see him pissing his life away in them goddamn computers. Do you ever feel like forgetting the whole thing? I think I got it easy. Well, now you can. I'm talking about life! Drop out and join the ranks of the few. The filthy. Crash. <laughs> I got my own place, a condominium. Where else can you live for free? And eat for even less? Well, be forewarned. Freedom has its price. Yes, there's always a snake in the Garden of Eden. We know about those snakes. Hey, ten to play Viper. One buck. Here's to you, pussy. Don't drink my flavor! What? What's the matter? You can't hold your liquor, huh? And... There's your toilet scene for everybody that was wondering. Um, why. So this, so this definitely was like up for some Oscars, right? <laughs> <laughs> for like art direction and costumes and special effects and yeah, special effects, man, makeup, uh, soundtrack, huh. best acting. Wow, uh, <laughs> it slept. It, it slept three words. How much did this sell for? Um, the old street trash book sold for fifty-five dollars. Wow. Mike Lackey and Roy Frumkus, based on the cl- cult classic film. Cult classic. Oh, how is that a classic? I literally never heard of that. It's the word Not, cult. <laughs> now most of the cult classics you haven't probably heard 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 about. Uh, I mean that. I I'm still trying. Like I'm looking at that trailer and I'm still trying to figure out what what, what was even going on. <laughs> I can't figure out. They just some random dudes in a in a junkyard and they drank some poison. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. What's You're acting going like on. you've never watched like Repo Man or or that like, was not yeah. Repo. There was no way that was like Repo Man. <laughs> or like 1980s Red filmmaking, Zombie, baby. You know, like those B-list, like cheesy horror films that like. They're so bad. They're amazing, you know. The... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> Good shit. All right, moving on. George R. R. Martin's Game of Thrones issue number one, the one in ten cover B, from Dynamite Comics. Shout out Dynamite Comics. On the list, we talk about these Game of Thrones books uh, more than normal, I think, because we all love them. These old school They're Game of Thrones so... books. They're... They're so hard to find, yeah. like, especially the variants. They're, they're not easy to find. This isn't even, I mean, so this issue number one, there's a version of this one, mm-hmm. um, of this actual cover. It's a one in 75. I don't think I've ever seen it, hmm. ever. Like, I've never seen the one in 75 or 50 or whatever it is, but it's this one is a virgin um, cover. Um, Wait, I have a question, though, on the virgin cover. Does it have the HBO logo thing? Or is that on? Yes, I think it, it does. does not have. It does no, it not doesn't? have the HBO okay. thing. Wow. Okay. No, it's just, it's just the uh, the tree and and him is it, and I don't. So, it, it's hard for me to tell who the characters are. I mean, because I you know I only know them from the show, so if they don't look exactly that, like. Would that be like Jamie? What I, don't I know. saw. Yeah. But, oh no, that's the dad. That's the the Stark dad cleaning off the sword yeah, before he has to it use it. Ned Stark. Yeah, it yeah. may be Ned Stark, but I don't, yeah. I don't know. 
Why do you guys think it's hot? Is it because those uh, those teasers came out this week for House of the Dragon? I don't think it's hot. Two? I just think it sells whenever one pops up because they're tough to find. Yeah, yeah, because this one sold for stupid. So a CGC nine two um, of this, it's just a one in ten sold for hundred and eighty dollars this week for a nine two. Dang. Yeah, tough to find books, man. That's for sure. And with, I think Richie has a little bit to add with the new, uh, you know, Dragons Dance, what is it called? Um, House of the Dragon. House, House of the Dragon. Dragon. Yeah, getting ready to, they're starting to show more for the new season of that. So, and that was a great season. That first season was really good for House of the Dragons. Oh, so good. I've watched it three times. Uh, yeah. Two without the subtitles and the last one with the subtitles. Yeah, Damn, am I gonna have to watch like Game of Thrones to like understand this conversation? So good. Read it. Yeah. Read it. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. No. Go put on the read headphones it. and read it. Yeah. That way. Oh, okay. Get, Audiobooks. That, yeah. Dude, that way I'm... you don't get destroyed when season ten and nine happen. Mm. Yeah. Honestly, other than the, other than the very last season of Game of Thrones. It, the rest of it was literally just like almost almost perfect television. Yeah. Yep, I agree. I agree. It was the greatest TV or movie, anything made on, to be viewed on a screen to me until that final season. And then yeah. I just hate it. Uh, I, I don't even tell people to watch it that have never seen it because I don't want them to feel like I felt when mm, that yeah. season happened. That, that very, very first show was, I mean, like the pilot was, I remember I was on a trip. I mean, I was like on a work trip and it popped on the TV and I just had HBO on and it popped on. I was like, what is this? Like, I've never, I'm not a book reader, so I'd never even heard of the books. I was like, what is this? And I remember hmm. watching that thinking, oh my gosh, what is going on? What yeah. just happened here? This, this is the the craziest start to a TV show, uh, you know, that I think I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah, good shit. All right, moving on. Marauders, issue number one. This is the Dodderman second print. Russell Dodderman second print. Uh, one in 25 Virgin Red Queen cover. And who doesn't love a some knuckle tattoos and Lockheed? This is Before a hideous it. looking cover, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> that dragon. I mean, this is horrible. really bad. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> It's not Russell Dodderman 10 material. I mean, you don't like chicks with like knuckle tattoos? I do, but Well, and and maybe ones that don't look like they their face is made out of wood. <laughs> yeah. Um Yeah, it just looks terrible. I think this is awful. Um I don't know why anybody would buy this. I certainly don't know why somebody spent $225 on a CGC 96 of this. Whoa! Um, yeah, it's just <laughs> it's ugly. Congrats to the seller. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They got lucky. It actually looks like they cut her off at the waist, or she's like <laughs> waist deep in some weird like something. Red goo. Yeah, something. Who ate? Yeah. yeah. That's that's rough right there. The dragon in the back's going to car. I mean, okay, you guys tell me because I'm clearly not an artist, but oh, I mean, if you drew something like this, would you just be like, oh yeah, that's what I want the world to see, or would you look at it and be like, Ugh, that's awful. Like, why did I just? Why am I going to submit this? But I have to because I've got a deadline. Yeah, that's uh, a good point. I mean, as a former painter, like I always hated all my work, always. But you know, people enjoyed it or just said nice things about it all the time. So I don't know if people were just being polite or actually being like critical. You know what I mean? So I never knew what to believe and not to believe. And so I just always judged my stuff as always like just hideous kind of situation. Well, um, I've been trying to tell you, bro, you gotta you gotta move away from those finger paints. Start using a brush. 
<laughs> I need hey, I need a, I, I, need a I won an award. In, I, I won a I won an award in college for nice. Yeah, I like to see that. That's dope. So, That's yeah, awesome. So, so uh second place in the student art show. So just saying. You I are very I creative. Did, yeah, I definitely need a Yee original piece. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I have a bunch like still like because of uh I was trying to gather up like enough pieces to photograph to submit to uh to go to grad school for for art no shit oh, yeah it's amazing. It's amazing so i spent like a, a year after college um uh because the economy was really bad anyways so i was like oh i have time to like paint up a bunch of paintings and like do the band thing and then yeah yeah so nice. i was but, gonna say uh ben uh you might not be an artist but you're definitely a critic <laughs> <laughs> hey <laughs> Well, I mean, that's what you need too. Is like that, this is that brutal honesty. Hell yeah! Because like, if people are just like fluffy all the time, then you're they're just gonna keep on doing the same same shit, right? That's right. That's right. What is it? What's the saying? Those that can't teach or something or can't <laughs> <laughs> yeah something yes. like whatever that whatever that's, that's, saying. Oh wait, those that don't succeed teach, or those that fail teach, right, or something like that. Something like that. I don't know yeah. what the thing is. Um, well, Russell Dodderman's yeah. not that. He has definitely succeeded. Uh, and his most of his covers are much better than this. So, moving on. Oh, man. I This is another one of those books that you watch The House of Stein for. Another book that, just like Haunt Ashcan you aren't going to find any information about or find covers of walking dead deluxe issue number one the birmingham bulls variant now if you don't know who the birmingham bulls are the birmingham bulls are a minor league hockey team and they did a walking dead night in april of 2023 and gave out this comic as part of walking dead night and they all wore those style walking dead style jerseys i guess too i mean <laughs> what kind of how much are they charging for tickets to where they can drop 10 grand on a uh on a comic variant um and then to give away it seems crazy but um yeah birmingham bulls is this birmingham alabama or is this birmingham not alabama i don't know I don't know. Is it is this Alabama? <laughs> so I'll tell you. Uh, Birmingham Bulls. There we go. Uh, Saturday, April 8th, 7 p.m., The Walking Dead Night. First of 1,000 adults, age 18 plus, get a Walking Dead Deluxe, number one, featuring Birmingham Bulls variant cover. So only 1,000 of them. And Birmingham and that Bulls. Was, that was last year, right? Yeah. Uh, SPHL hockey team, Birmingham, Alabama. So there we go. Are you guys watching The Walking Dead? The Rick and Michelle and stuff. Mm, I heard it's I really good. I, I watched the first episode. It was great. Yeah, it's uh, really good. Uh, I know Lake's watching it. Uh, I am not. So that's a cool book right there, though, man. That's that's a cool find. Not many of them made it out of there in good condition, I imagine. Um, and this one that sold was a nine eight, right? Or not? Yeah, nine eight. So for two hundred and seventy five dollars. Wow! Ooh, not that bad. cardstock, baby, cardstock. Let's go. That's a cool. That's a cool variant. I love these type of promo books. All right, next. Vampirella issue number ten, the Jenny Frizen cover B variant, one of the great Jenny Frizen variants that I love, because it's also got pomegranates on it i'm a huge pomegranate fan i had a pomegranate tree growing up and that's a cool cover. is that what that is that what those are yeah I thought those they are were pomegranates hearts. no they're pomegranates oh, oh i thought cool. i thought they're hearts because you know vampirella like sucks your blood so <laughs> why are that what's pomegranates have to do with anything? pomegranate juice looks like blood i guess i don't know but, yeah i was uh, like if you're gonna name a fruit that where it looks like blood it's either that or it's like dangerous. maybe a yeah. grapefruit. 
is this the only pomegranate cover in, in existence? <laughs> it might be. It might be. That's a great question. First appearance of pomegranate right here. Let's go. <laughs> Isn't there a new Frizen cover that's coming out? I think I saw a new Frizen cover that's coming out for Vampirella or something that is just gorgeous. Oh, man. I just got a key alert. Sure. Um, let me see if I can find First pomegranate? This. What? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Kreider posted it on his IG, but I could be wrong. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, yeah, this. It's nice. Upcoming like Frizen, it. yeah. Dan Vampirella Dark Reflections number one. That is fucking awesome. Wow. It, it reminds me too much of the uh, uh, Nightmare Country cover. I love it. I'm going to try and find one. That's a good one. How much did this one sell for right here, Stein? This one sold a CGC 9.8 of this sold for $200 this week. Wow. Damn. And again, it goes back to, it goes, I, I, I still just uh, believe that comic book collectors are a back end group. What, what's just, a back end group? What does that mean? A hind end, yeah. the butt. Yeah, they they like they like derriers. Oh, like <laughs> super super anal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like anal about everything without doing anal. Oh man, I walked into that one. <laughs> I walked in the bathroom and fell into a mud pit. My bad. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Uh. Man, I love this show. Love this show. Good shit, guys. All right. I think that's the almost 10, ladies and gentlemen. So make sure you guys uh, come hang out with us tomorrow night. Monocarmic Mayhem over on Beyond Wednesdays. Uh, oh, you didn't get the last two? Did I not get the last two? <gasps> I did. Nope. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Giant Size Special, issue number 11, The Newsstand. A lot of people don't realize that this is a giant size special. Yeah, how many pages are on this thing? That's a great question. I have one of these. My guess and seventy-two. And what is the um, what's the what's this fifth turtle? Who is this? I can't remember. I it's sitting in a, a long box somewhere. Mm. I'm sure chat will be able to tell us. Paul, answer the question for us. Paul, yeah, where are you? It's not Jenica. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I just I just looked over at the TV screen and Houston's gonna lose to Duke, and they just showed this little girl, mm -hmm. and her face was like the saddest face ever. It's probably gonna be a meme. Um, it was <laughs> she looked so sad. <laughs> what was the What was the other upset? Wasn't there another big upset today? Arizona lost. Arizona? NC State beat Marquette. Oh, Marquette. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 48 um, pages on this. It says on the cover. Oh, uh, 48. I, it's because I can't read still. That's a giant size for you. Um, well, <laughs> this newsstand, um, a raw, and the guy had it graded as an AO. Um, raw sold for $180. How much? $180 for a raw find, AO. I got to find this book. Really? <laughs> wow. Wow. Brian's like $200 on eBay right now. If I can find it. <laughs> if you yeah. remember to find it, right? Yeah. yeah. So I like this. I like the Archie run, um, the cartoon style run that they did. Because there's this cool part where, well, I mean, there's aliens and all the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles stuff, but there's a cool alien uh, storyline in the Archie stuff. But ouch, the Yankees beat the Astros seven to one. All right, moving on. And finally, the real final book of the Almost Ten. Gwenpool Sketchbook or GPS by Guri Huru from Tokyo Comic Con in twenty seventeen. This is my favorite one of the week because I have no idea how you even 
I mean, how would you even obtain this thing unless you lived in Japan, right? eBay. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. didn't one um, sell on eBay? What did it sell for? Three hundred dollars. Wow. For this. And this is a real I, sketchbook, a real art book, right? What, there's a difference between what people, because I think like, you know, some people could say, "Well, I'm an artist, and I'm just doing a sketchbook." I feel like if you're an, I mean, I don't know, maybe I gotta, we gotta flesh that out one of these nights, you know? Like, what's the difference between a sketchbook and a art book? Hey, hey, Tony. So I have a question. If Long Short buys it, is he still an influencer? Because he bought it. <laughs> <laughs> Was Long Short the one that bought it? Yeah, Long Short's the one who bought it. So wow. I have a really funny story about this. So he, he sent us the link and was like, he's like, yo, another one showed up to market because like they don't show up very often. And because he already has one. And then he's like, and then like not even like two hours later, uh, he sends back to the chat, all right. Which one of y'all bought it? And then he bought it. <laughs> He's like, just joking. I was the one that bought it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and then like, this is the funniest part, right? So he bought it from eBay a year ago. It was from the same seller. Oh wow! Yeah. What? Yeah. That's crazy. Was it from Japan? The seller. Uh, I think so. I think he's overseas. Interesting. Yeah. There we go. And what would a Tokyo what would Tokyo Comic Con look like? <clears throat> like they're ten years in the future. Yeah. That's what I imagine. I imagine the cosplay is insane. I yeah. think that I, th I feel like it would they would be more fun than our cons. Like ours uh -oh. just sell fudge and. <laughs> good things like that like i feel like they're like the cons over there would be like really fun yeah i bet the costumes are, or cosplay is like insane like i could only imagine like you know whatever we have here it could only be like 10 times better right you guys like sushi no yeah i love sushi oh yeah me too it's my favorite and that is I the like, almost i like 10. to look at sushi